Hello and welcome to this webinar session today. It's the 13th of September 2017. Uh, my name's Connor. Today we'll be running through uh, some system families, so floors, walls and roofs. Um, after some introductions about myself, a few general slides, we'll get into the subject of uh, today's webinar. I'll be jumping between this presentation and Revit to give you some live demos. Um, any questions or anything like that throughout, um, just jot them down and there'll be an email at the end, um, an email address that you can send any questions over um, to us and any other information that you're after. Uh, again, uh, email us over your questions and we can get back to you on that. Um, so this is number three in the webinar series uh, run by BIM Store. Uh, we've had another two, the first one by my colleague and BIM Store's director, Chris Atkinson, on loadable families. You can see on the screen there um, a couple of bits that he covered in his, uh, in his talk. So what is a loadable family and some tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your uh, content that you're creating using tick boxes and other uh, cool parameters like that. Um, and also in the second episode, uh, we had pipe work by my colleague Ryan, uh, and he kind of went through the ins and outs of the various different connections and things like that, how you set up your own uh, system family for pipe work. You can find both of these uh, episodes and this one, once we've gone through everything, on the BIM TV page on the BIM Store website and also on our YouTube channel as well. So if you haven't already uh, uh, seeing those ones, definitely worth checking those out. Okay. So today, obviously, you're talking about system families. So we'll be covering what is a system family um, in terms of floors, walls, and roofs, and some tips and tricks on how you get the most out of these. Um, we'll run through a little bit of how we set everything up at BIM Store, and then also how you can add in uh, data, et cetera, when you're making your own system families in-house. A little bit about me. Uh, my name's Connor Lang, content specialist at uh, BIM Store. Been here for about over, just over five years now. During that time, I've worked with companies like Barrett Homes, David Wilson, um, and then you know a couple of other ones like Speedy Hire, manufacturers like Grower, Fobo Flooring, Altro, Franca, Mycin. That's just to name a few off the top of my head. Um, in this time as well, I've also been uh, to university, um, studied architectural technology, um, and you know, working within Space Group uh, over those years, I've managed to get a lot of experience in terms of how BIM has been developing, um, and also how these components that we create at BIM Store are used in terms of in an architectural practice. Um, it's been a uh, hectic five years and a, but a very, very good five years where a lot of uh, different things have been happening. So I feel like I can bring a lot of kind of knowledge um, and hopefully today you'll learn something that you didn't already know or, you know, um, it'll just set the foundations in place for you to make your own system families. So there's two family types in Revit. Uh, three if you count adaptive components, but um, they're not a massive part of the of the um, show at the minute. So the two main ones are system and loadable. Obviously, today we're going to be to be looking at the system families. So what is a system family? Well, you have various different uh, families that you can kind of look into in Revit. So Obviously, like I've said, today we're covering floors, walls, and roofs. You can see that on the first three images to the left-hand side. There's also some other ones such as stairs, railings, balustrades, uh, which you can see an example of on the right. And then below that, there's a pipework system, which uh, has already obviously been covered. So you can look back and have a look at how we're going to create pipework systems as well. 
But before you get started, it's a good uh, idea to start looking at planning how you're going to make these families, first of all. It's dead important to get everything in place in terms of what you want the component to do, what you want the user to get out of that component, and then looking into what the limitations should be for the component, etc. So what we've done at BIM Store, at the back end of the BIM Store Bible, you can actually access a content creation checklist and it just gives you a little bit of planning to do that at the outset before you start working through the component and then realize actually you've missed something out or whatever and you're going to have to go back and redo that so it just lets you put the groundwork and the foundations in place before you go ahead and start creating your content whether that be system families or uh, loadable families so yeah the bim store bible is a document that we've got openly available on our website you can find it at the resource center uh, we're on to version 15 now and essentially what the document is is just a, a accumulation of all the other kind of pars and bs documents uh, put into a re uh, readable format for you guys so it allows you to get all of the guidance you need and create good accurate bim content and gives you, you can see there on the screen it cover, what it kind of covers briefly, uh, some examples. So today, what I'm going to be running through is just three basic uh, systems that we've kind of got on BIM Store. The main one I'll be using is Florin. So we'll look at kind of how all of the uh, data and all that sort of thing goes into uh, floor buildups. Um, that'll just be an example because essentially all of these work in a very, very similar fashion. Um, but first of all, we'll be running through Fobo, Wienerberger, and Russell Roof Tiles. And I'll show you the basics of how they are set up um, in this kind of standard format that we like to follow up in store and setting up system families. So before you do anything uh, in terms of downloading a, a family from BIM Store, it's important to map the materials that you've downloaded. So in the zip folder, what you'll usually find is the Revit uh, system family, user guide, a readme file, and then um, the material folder. So it's really important to map these JPEG images or PNGs, whatever they are in the folder, over to a local RVT file where that's never going to change location. That essentially means that Revit can always go back to that location and find these images to map the realistic uh, effect onto the system whether it be floors, walls, or roofs. So the standard structure is always uh, the same as what you see there. So local RVT, BIM store, materials, and then we'll have another folder for the manufacturer after that. So what I'll do is I'll go through this uh, in a bit more detail in a, in a second, and you can see how this works. So a standard setup of uh, floors. This is an example of four bore, and we'll be running through this in the software in a minute. So you can see there, we have all the various types laid out. A little bit of bump on the side there that gives you a bit of an explanation on how the how you kind of map those materials across. And then if you notice, all the materials are on there. So you have that realistic look to the materials. So what I'll do is I will jump over now to the software just give you a bit of a look at this so in Revit if I open uh, this folder and we haven't got any materials mapped over here you can see that in realistic they just show up as white blocks and like I say that's because there's no materials currently mapped over so what I will do is this is the material folder here just make this a little bit smaller so you can see uh, so you can see the various materials in here so it's a case of uh, copying all of them 
and then navigating over to your local drive which we've got here so you can see we've got local rvt bim store materials and then what i'll do is add another folder in there go forward go into that one paste those in there so you can see those now in that location okay so i'll go back if i just close this off hide that for a second Um, okay, doc. So we go back, open this up. You can see now when it loads up, we should have all the materials on there. There you go. So Bear with me. Okay, doc. So with that, now what we can do is go ahead and start copying these over to the projects. Uh, but what I'll do first is I'll just jump back uh, and show you the other uh, options that we have. In the other systems so in this we'll go over this is a standard setup for walls so a slightly different setup that we show uh, for Wiener Burger shown on a sheet initially when it's opened up and you can see the various different views in there we also show the tile JPEG image as well which is quite handy And that just means that just gives the user an idea of what the what we're actually looking at. And we also have a similar setup for Russell roof tiles again, set up with a logo, company address, and all of that kind of thing. And again, the images on there, which are kind of at the photo or realistic level. Okay, okay. So. How are we going to get this content from the system family over to, you know, the, your content? So to your project. And how we go about doing that is quite straightforward. So if I uh, get out of this for a second. So we have our project, and if I open this up, so we have our project here. And what we're gonna do is simply select the items that we're after. So let's take this one. Uh, you can just press control to select multiple files. Uh, multiple types and then up here in the corner we have a copy to clipboard so we're going to copy that now we're going to move over to our project go back to modify and we can paste in there just click ok on that think about it for a couple of seconds okay then we're going to paste that can't see anything just because it's in section so what we can do obviously we have these floating which we don't want so we can just select these and now delete them okay so these are now embed in the project and what we'll do is go ahead and place one of these in this room here right so see there 
that's our room. So we've got two different ways we can do this. We can kind of modify this floor, which will then give you, a, it'll be a bit of a nightmare in terms of all of this floor is one kind of slab almost, if you like. So we just want to go room by room. So we're just going to go architecture floor. And then it's going to be a case of picking these. So we're going to go second floor. Uh, I know that the height offset needs to be about that. Okay, then we're going to just go around, and pick all of these, pick these walls. We'll trim this. Click a box. And now from the drop down, what you can see here is the various different items. So we'll start with the first one. Let's get this on the right level. Here we go. Okie doke, let's change this to realistic so we can see those images pulled across. There you go. So, it's so what you kind of get there with that. So, what is so what's really good about uh, the manufacturers that we deal with is that the floor, the images that we get are of a very large area. Obviously, uh, some of you may or may not know Revit tiles its images over a large area. So, the smaller uh, the image is, the kind of the worse it looks because of that tile and effect. Whereas, so what we do at BIMSTOR is try and get a lot of uh, manufacturers to supply us with the largest area of uh, materials possible. And with that, we get a more realistic look. So from there, we can now go ahead and flick between a few different uh, types of this to get a different effect and you can see you can kind of see the look that we're getting there. So a dead straightforward method of getting the getting the items over, getting those uh, families straight into your project. It's as simple as copy and paste. Okay. So. So yeah, like I say, copy up here, and then it then allows you to paste into your project. Always when you download, you'll find that there's user guides included, which gives you guidance on all of these features as well. So in terms of mapping your materials and also getting the, uh, the component over, you can see an example here. This is the four-ball one, so you can see kind of gives you a little bit of guidance in terms of mapping and then going through uh, with the various other kind of options and uh, the data that it has, etc. So creating your own uh, content can be a bit of a challenge. I understand that. I don't think we appreciate that here. So, you know, that's why we have this guidance available for you. So, like I've mentioned, the BIM Store Bible available to download. You just simply click that button and away you go. And also what we do in terms of getting the data over is the Autodesk standard shared parameter folder. And this is essentially a copy of the folder that we have in terms of the Kobe data and all of that, so that your components can work in the same uh, in the same project as components downloaded from BIM Store that we've created because the GUID codes for those parameters are match up. So great resources there. So in terms of creating the materials, this can be found in the manage section of the project. Um, so simple manage, uh, manage on the Revit ribbon and then over to materials. And what I'll do now is I'll just jump in and I'll do a quick example for you 
of how we're going to make a, a floor type and we'll add some data to the floor and also the materials okay so let me just jump back into our Revit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a brand new project from scratch to give you an idea of how we would create the floor. So initially on a blank project, what we would want to do is set the canvas um, to go ahead and start creating. So obviously we have a lot of standard uh, bump in the project. So we want to get all of that purge. Then from a floor, We'll just draw a basic size here, three meters by three meters. Okay, I'll we'll take that. So that's me floor in there and you can see there that's the type. So we'll go ahead and start editing this. So I've clicked at a type on the side here. This has brought up this box and you can see there's no data included in there. So what we'll start doing is we'll uh, duplicate this. We'll rename this. Uh, manufacturer name. And then the name of the florin with the product code. Okay, great. And then we can start to edit this so you can see we have a structure tab and this can be as many different layers as you like so obviously if we're just doing floor finishes you'll find that it's just the, the normal fin uh, just the floor finish included so it might be five mil thick and then we'll change this to be finish but if you have multiple if you want to do a full floor build up with you know the slab insulation uh your beam and block, like your beam, all of that sort of thing. We can go in and we can start adding in new layers like this. So if I was to change that, and then I, was, you know, then you've got substrate, and then you've got your finish. We can start building that up. So three hundred fifty. Okay, so that gave us that floor build up, and then we can start adding in standard parameters as well. So, what I'll then do is also if we want to add custom parameters, it's added in a slightly different way to what you, you would add loadable families. So, for the, uh, for the system family, what we do is we go to manage. And then we have these parameters in here. So we have project parameters. And then we can kind of go in and start adding our own. So what I would tend to do is um, add in all shared parameters. So they speak for themselves. Project parameters is much like type parameters and loadable families. So they're going to, they, um, well, they can appear in schedules, but not in tags, whereas type parameters and loadable families will not be scheduled but these can be uh, scheduled across the board and put in tags and everything so we want shared parameter and then we're going to go ahead and click select so we haven't specified a shared parameter and this is where our shared parameter from bim store comes in so we we'll click browse and then uh, we'll just navigate to that so in here uh, there's the folder and this is the shared parameter file so you can see now that's loaded in and these are the standard groups we have in here with then the parameters and all of these should be loaded into your family so it's just a case of clicking or clicking the one that you want so we'll just click the top one on here okay see that's loaded in there 
We then have a number of different options. So we can have uh, where we group it under. So we tend to group all of our Kobe in other. Then whether it's a type or instance, most of the time it's just a type. There's a, there's a few that are instances which you can find out on the through the BIM store Bible. And then we have to specify what kind of uh, what category we want to put this in. So we want it to be on the floor buildup. So we're going to tick floors, and then we click OK. You can see that's added it into the project. Click OK. Now, if I go and edit this, you'll see that under other, we have that in there. And that's a process for that you would follow for all of the different parameters that you wanted to add in to the floor. So again, that's a very, very similar process for the materials. So go project and we'll modify, uh, sorry, we'll add shared parameter. And you can see there we have Kobe materials. So it has MTRL at the front. So we're going to click OK. Again, we want that in other. But now what we need to do is leave these as an instance. Because if as a type, you don't get material in here. So you can see there we have materials between mass and mechanical equipment. If I change that to a type and I scroll down, mass and mechanical equipment, we haven't got that option. So we need to keep that as an instance. Scroll down, materials, OK, OK. And that's now added that in. So what I'll do, and in the Manage tab, we'll go to Materials now. Uh, here is the window that opens up. So in our floor, what I'll do is make a new type. So I'll duplicate this. And we'll call this the same, if I can remember what I called it before. Um, I can't, so we'll just go ahead and just do and remember me code one, two, three. Okay, so we've made that, and also what we'll do it's really important that although you've duplicated the material in here, you also then go into this section and duplicate the appearance. Otherwise, when you go and change the material colors or anything like that, these two would still be linked together, even though you've changed the name of that. So I've duplicated that. I've renamed it to the same name. And now we're good to go with that. So if I go into this button, which is custom parameters, you can see there's the parameter in there that I added in. And now we want to have a look at mapping these materials. So you can see there's a box here that says image. Let's pull this a little bit bigger. Um, change that. So you can see we've just got gray at the moment. If you wanted to just change a color, you can do that very easily. But for the sake of this, we want to obviously have images on there. So you kind of click that box. So I'll do that again. Click the box on there, the wording, and then navigate to where you've saved your, uh, your materials. So we go local folder, local RVT, BIM store, materials, and then you'd have your manufacturer name. We'll just use a 401, and then we click the one we want. So you can see that's put that in there. Now, if we want to adjust the sizing or anything like that, you can do that by clicking in the box. It gives you various different options. Okay. I wouldn't worry too much about this, but for the sake of what we like to do, we just make that white. There's then various different options, uh, reflectivity, transparency, and all that side of it. But for the most part, if it's got a, a decent image in there, that usually does the trick. So we're going to click OK now. That's that material uh, 
created. So now what we need to do is apply it to the floor. If I move to a 3D view and I go to realistic, you can see that we're just on a gray box. So to apply, we edit the type, we edit the structure, and then we want to go to the top here. You can see that this is our material. So you're going to click OK. It's now populated that box with that. You're going to click OK and click OK again. And you can see it's added that in. What we now need to go and do is adjust the scale of this because you can see it's very, very small. It gives the tile effect. So what I would do is I would just go into this again, select, edit, edit. Click the little box to open that up. Click on the image. You get this option. So we're going to make that two by two. Click done. OK. 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 And you can see now that it's scaled that up and looks loads better. So a few processes to go through with system families in terms of adding data and editing your materials. But once you kind of get yourself going with it, uh, it's a very easy process to get through. Okay, so I'll jump back over to the presentation. Holy dog. So... creating your own final notes. So like I've, I already mentioned some of these, so it's always worth purging out your families right at the end. So before, with system families, we do that more or less at the start, just to get rid of any sort of dead weight that we don't want in the project environment. But in general, whether you've finished a loadable family that you've created or you've finished a system family, it's always good to just check with a final purge that you're purging out everything that isn't meant to be in there. So any card you've loaded in, etc. Uh, you want to try and keep the file size to a minimum, and that's a good way to do that. Um, save the file in an appropriate view. So we went through the standard setups that we have at BIM store. So it's always worth setting those up um, just to keep everything consistent within the families that you're creating. Um, Create the user guide. So again, we covered that. So we want to always have a user guide with content that you're creating just to assist the user that might not know as much about, about Revit as you. Um, and try this little tip as well, because it's it's it seems to work really well for us in house, and we don't we don't have a clue why it actually works, but it does. Try to save as your component when you finish, and just add a one to the name. And you, what you'll usually find is that the file size drops. Um, it's a dead weird thing, but for whatever reason, it does work. Once you've saved it, you can just take that one back off the name uh, and the file size should stay down. So it's quite a handy tip. Here's some uh, in-house tools that we use. So these are really 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 good uh, can't express that enough um, especially when doing system families rvt tools lets you populate all of the uh, parameters well lets you pump all the parameters into your families in one go so whereas we were clicking in and out there adding those material parameters and the system family parameters this allows you to select all of those parameters within the software and just pump that in in one go. So really amazing time-saving uh, tool. And then uh, BIM Link, again, lets you go in in an Excel format and edit your data once you've created a, a bunch of types, et cetera. So that's really good. Um, coming soon, our own in-house app, Athenium as well also it's going to be a great uh, a cool app so look out for that uh, on our website we'll be doing a lot of shouting about that when it does come out 
and with that, uh, we'll close. I, I hope I've covered everything uh, that you guys were, were after. If there's any questions on anything, like I say, uh, there's our email address. So drop us an email and we can follow up with any additional questions that you have. Or if you want any additional information at all, uh, drop us that, drop a line uh, to that email and we can get back to you on that. Uh, thank you very much for your time today. I hope it's been worth it. Uh, <laughs> I know time is a, a valuable thing to a lot of people. So thank you very much for, for spending the time listening to me today. Um, and take care. Thank you very much.